our vision has developed the first true, shape-changing, fluid-driven, accommodating IOL. We mimic the eye's natural accommodative process, creating what we call a continuously variable monofocal, which gives consistent high image quality over all distances. We have some great and new positive data to report today, and uh, we are moving forward with continuing innovation in our product portfolio. So just a few words about how the fluid vision lens works. When the eye moves to its natural accommodative state, the capsular bag squeezes a tiny bit of fluid, less than a drop, from the periphery of our lens into the middle. This inflates the lens, giving near vision. When the eye moves to its disaccommodated state, the reverse happens, the fluid moves, from the, moves the other way and it deflates the lens, leading to far distant vision. Over the company's history, we've built a systematic portfolio of clinical data which supports our performance and claims. We began and have implanted 150 eyes or so with our prior generation device. We have up to three year data in that cohort of patients. We reported at our la the last meeting here on our multi-center pilot study with our newest uh, Fluid Vision 2020 device. And we are now in the process of conducting two multi-center randomized controlled studies with our current Fluid Vision 2020 device. And that is comparing the device to monofocals as well as trifocals. We have a target of more than 100 eyes to implant in that study and we're in the middle of it now. I'm gonna report on the Orion, which is the monofocal cohort of patients today. The enrollment is complete in that study. It is a prospective multi-center contralateral implant study of the Fluid Vision 2020 versus the Acrosoft. 54 patients, um, seven sites in South Africa, follow up to six months. The, the results were outstanding. Mono, all monocular results consistent with our pilot study results predictive of excellent visual outcomes across all distances, demonstrated safety. We talk about a continuously variable monofocal. What do we mean by that? We mean that we offer uh, good vision at all distances, but we do not split light in any way. This is some bench data showing our device uh, at different distances. You can show crisp, see crisp, clear, equal brightness images across the, across the spectrum. And I'm pleased to say for the first time, we've really definitively proved that in our clinical data, where we show that our contrast sensitivity is directly comparable, equivalent to that of a monofocal. Since the company's founding, we have focused on the mechanistic basis of our performance, specifically looking at objective accommodation. We have proven this objective accommodation with our device again and again. This is the result, these results you see are a patient responding to a near and far stimulus and clearly shows that their uh, eye power, their objective power is changing uh, in, re in response to that stimulus. The CLEAR study, I mentioned we were doing two studies. The CLEAR study is a study versus uh, of our bilateral implantation of our device versus bilateral implantation of a multifocal, i.e. a trifocal. That study is being conducted in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, El Salvador, and South Africa. We're enrolling today. Um, I don't have any data to share with you, but I can tell you a sneak peek at the data shows that it's going great. I'm pleased to just mention, again, our strategic alliance with Alcon. Alcon made a significant investment in the company um, to fund our development of our newest product and clinical trials and provides Alcon with the option to acquire PowerVision. We're working together with Alcon to bring this exciting new technology into the marketplace, and uh, it's been a great partnership. We appreciate it. So we'll never stand still. Um, we've made dramatic improvements in our product and technology over, our, over the course of our history, focusing on shrinking the incision size and improving performance. We've shrunk the incision size from four to three and a half millimeters, now we've proven 3.2 millimeters. We expect to show our current device can go through a 2.8 millimeter incision, and we don't believe that is the floor for incision size either. Um, we've made significant improvements in performance, as you can see from our data today, moving from already very good to great performance. 
Um, we've developed a prototype Toric accommodating IOL and I hope to be able to share with you at some future date some exciting work we're doing at the, which is now at the proof of concept level on the ability to alter the uh, refractive power of the lens, lens after implant uh, using a simple in-office laser-based procedure. Thank you very much. Thank you.